some tractors, little bud. Uh, he's got a hand ready to go look at some tractors. Wow. stuck in the mud let's pack up a life baby and call it a night cause the longer we stay here the harder the fight i said hey yeah 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 call it a start by leaving behind what's breaking our hearts i said hey All right, day one, ag show. Some of the booths I'm obviously gonna try and hit up today are some machines that I'd actually be interested in. Uh, got a Kubota booth here. Just wanna give a little comparison between the new version of our machine versus the Takahuchi. We'll go back to that booth later, but they got the uh, radio station pumping music right next to it, so we don't wanna get you know, demonetized on them videos. So we'll wait till they shut down for whatever reason. Somebody probably unplugged their power source. Over 1,200 vendors here. Got these little trolleys. It's obviously an ag show, so they have ag equipment here, but they got some other cool stuff. I don't think anybody actually understands farm equipment on just the massive level of it. I mean, even that one's a, a tiny little unit compared to this one, and that one's still big. Case really went out of their way on this exhibit this year. They got, they got like 100 machines here. That old boy stand next to it. He's seven foot. We got leather seats up in there. I think New Holland just decided we're going to put a little bit more black on the wheels and the cab. They look like the same design from the 90s. Same thing today. Well, what's it going to be? Really? Does it say how much this thing weighs there? Uh, it should be around 12,000 pounds. It's a little bit cheaper than I thought they were going to be with that new 97 horsepower option there. Yeah, this one could carry that uh, truck. <laughs> Upgrading your wheelbarrow game. A whacker. Yeah. Never mind, I have heard of the whackers. Literally a whacker. I didn't know they made. Oh, a tilt cab? What? What in the world? A slope machine only it tilts one way, though. That's still badass. W for winter. And if you actually know my last name. This is like the biggest temporary tent building I've ever seen. I'm not brand loyal to Kubota or anything, but I just, I don't think I could ever buy a Kubota. And they do have a, we got a pickup, like a hundred feet in the air. Let's see if we can get underneath that thing. Some flatbeds over there. Kind of neat, but yeah. Well, they got the new John Deere's in stock. Caterpillar. Look like they made the tracks out of Grandpa's roof and barn. Dang. Now we're talking. That was Chalmers. That thing don't work. Here's one for you. Porch, diesel, that's standard, apparently back in the day. 
very awkward now. This floor is just... Oh, that's a bad sign. Chippy's got Dodge DOT trucks now. They'll be buckling down. Got rid of the old Fords. They got one over here in the back, I'll show you. I'm gonna avoid this booth. Oh, you just got a tractor up on a lift. No problem. See, there's the old one. Bird. Oh, well, I imagine that tractor's not very light, so that's damn impressive. I believe Mirror's making little little blue rigs now. Knew they made the skinny one, but came back around and did the good ones. What we got here. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> this is Leroy, but evidence of a completely small world. So Leroy watches the videos. Thank you for that. And he hit up David, bought a trailer from him. And I recognized him from a short little clip that you took up there at David's place behind a dump trailer yeah. down here at the Ag Expo. And we're talking about the old Cabelco excavator that he had a number of years back. And I was like, man, that sounds familiar. <laughs> well, this is a gentleman that sold the Cabelco to my dad, the one that sits in my yard. And we use it on a couple jobs here and there. So small, small world. So thank you for watching the videos. And thanks for you for driving down to hang out today. Shared quite a few good stories. This guy, he still don't know who I am. <laughs> no, wait, uh, oh. All right, day two, Ag Show. Turns out the VIP pass actually does something for you at check-in because, uh, well, they let you, let you ride on in. We thought they weren't doing no cavity check because we had a baby. They're checking everybody's rig back there with the general admission ticket. So the VIP actually counts for something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she thick. Hey, I'll get a clip of an 080 for comparison for you guys. This happens to be triple grouser, but it does have the angle blade. It seems to be more common on the boaters to catch them with the angle. I'll show you guys the price tag on this thing here in a second, but I mean, there isn't really too much difference. Cap size is a little bit bigger on this one, but it overall is about the same as mine. Just dimension for the boom, all that. Cap compartment. I believe Kubota uses like a one-shot spray and it, it doesn't hold up the best. Good crunch point right here, but now they got a hook on it, so you know, possibly feel a little stopping. I'll have to go back and review the footage. That cylinder seems pretty decent on this. I know the other one got to be bigger. Still, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this machine. It's still an awesome machine. It's done as well for the last several several years. I'm gonna just let you guys in on the price right there. 122000 dollars Let's see if this cab's any different than mine. I think it's just a touch wider because I accidentally bought a glass for the Dash 4 and it was a little bit wider. But other than that, everything feels the same. Oh look at that. They even got the oh they got different joysticks on this now. But they have a variable for the left stick and the right stick. Just like the Takahuchi. And second gear is on the trigger. Angle blade is a toggle. And same, same, same. Some pretty nice little groover here. That's the plastic out there on the top of that. We got a cup holder. Kind of in a, not a bad spot, but I thought this was kind of funny. Get one back there too. <laughs> you know, for your 
claiming this machine weighs 23,700 pounds. Ooh. Good girl. storage she's got in those little units but all right <laughs> The boys got to meet the Belt and Sons here. World Ag Expo. Global Machinery was nice enough to invite me down here. Hooked it up for me. I much appreciate it. So I'm going to go over a couple of machines they got down here. I'm trying to get on this side of the machine. Hide from the... They got that portable chainsaw mill or something going on over there. But this is the Takahuchi 2150. It's about a 35,000 pound excavator. Um, pretty good flow to the head. This is actually the machine that my buddy Johnny just bought. Uh, it had all the specs and stuff he wanted and it happened to be down here at the expo so I get to check it out before he even gets to see it but he went with Takahuchi versus Cat for various reasons but at the end of the day this is actually a very good machine in price point business wise you're going to get excellent dealer support and Takahuchi is a good machine by itself anyway but he did get this multra head I imagine that's the one that will go with it right there and a Rotobeck grapple, but that's about six months out. I added, did run one of these machines with Rotobeck on it. This thing's got some good speed. It's got good power. And it's very, very smooth. But a couple things. He wanted to get the triple grouser tracks that had the holes already drilled in it so that if he does some road kind of work, he can go ahead and put the rubber pads on there because doing residential stuff, ah, you don't want to be tearing everything up. If you get the rubber pad option, definitely a perk. But I'll just stand back. These machines, this is such a, like if I had a little boy, hands down, this would be the machine to get right here. I'd actually talked to him before, but obviously since I ordered, you know, another pickup truck, I'm going to stick with that. And the 290 is a Takahuchi 20,000 pound excavator. This is a rare option that I'm going to show you guys that I haven't seen too much at Global. And that is... They often they have like the road liner tracks, which is like the something similar to that, but just a rubber coating over the top of them. Normally they have those, and sometimes you get a rare option of the rubber tracks in there. And right there, having the angle blade, that doesn't seem to happen too often down there at Global. Normally I get the fixed ones, so it's a two way just up and down. It doesn't have the angle four way option. So when Jim said he had one of those in with the angle blade and the tracks that I like, I was like, man might be getting kind of close to pull the trigger i did run one of these with the mulcher head on it and it it seemed to be pretty dang good it's got good flow to the head for running a mulcher and then to get the uh the, the boom functions and everything are pretty nice and obviously i'm going to need a grapple to go with it so we'll go ahead and talk about this one here i personally never heard of this brand but i've seen this one sitting down there global for a while and i've had conversations back and forth on it I prefer the dangle grapple for my day-to-day -day use. If I could only have one, it would definitely be the dangle. I do see options and potential in areas that a fixed one would be definitely nice. But if you order this grapple, like this package, it comes with the whole angle U-joint and everything. And then you just got to have this part added to it, which ain't a big deal. Quick coupler on it. They have this machine dropped in from a different dealer and they went ahead and put the thumb on it like i asked and all this other stuff and that's pretty cool considering you know i haven't actually bought the machine but they went ahead and put some stuff on it to the specs that i was aiming for and got two tongs on the one side three over here once this machine's done with being down here at this ag expo it's going to go straight to a job and i'm going to put the demo on this thing if all goes to plan we come to agreement on you know money then i'll definitely be happy to run this bad girl cool things about these i don't know if that machine's unlocked so i'm not even going to worry about opening the door cabs are that's a big big dog cab there but look at the, got the fuel tank here it's horsepower is less than what's required to have depth so you have to worry about that but just look how the ease of access to everything on here is look at that that is gosh 30 40 percent bigger than the one on the 080 if you guys knew the channel i run a uh, kx 080-3 which is a kubota variant of this thing is literally the same 
like pretty much everything. Some say that Kubota copies the Takahuchi, but I don't know. This one's just got all kinds of room to access to work on. It looks a little low on the hydraulic there. We'll have to talk to somebody about that. Backup cam. All the paneling's all steel. Easy, easy access to pretty much everything in here. If you ever worked on a Kubota and changed a pilot filter, that's this little fella here, you'll know that that's not easy to access on other machines. That's nice to actually put it up there so it's easy to get to. Oil filter, right on the side, easy going. Fuel filter, right there. Air cleaner, kind of hidden. Let's check out the cooling pack on this thing. <clears throat> so it looks like radiator right there. Let's go down into here. Air condition, something else. And then the other half of that bad girl is going to be your hydraulic cooler. So I'd say it's got a, oh wow, four inch thick cooling pack on it. That's definitely an improvement. Toolbox. Got a pin for something. I don't know. Let's look inside the cab. All right, here, Hoss, I'll show you a little video so you can satisfy some curiosity. See how high that thing stands. Hopefully, they're going to let me fire it up or tear it down right now. But it seems to be a pretty dang stout grapple. I mean, the double cylinder, like we were talking about back in the day, if we got to get out something like this. The FAA booth said that they said uh, V-belt and Sons more time than they said FAE all, all exhibit. So, climb up on this thing. Got to do some damage. Look at that cylinder. Mm, that's weird. Uh, let's see, she cranks. Oh, it beeped. Oh, I put the security on. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. Fired up right now. Let's see if they got the controls backwards. Yep. Oh, that's right. Well, the air conditioner system on this old girl, let's turn it off so you can hear me. Uh, it actually has, you know, bi-level kind of stuff, so it puts it to a different spot. Normally, you just get all out, every vent, whatever it can deliver, so that's kind of nice. Ah, oh, it's got some emissions junk on there, auto idle, windshield spray, wiper, um, auto idle, eco mode, don't know, care about that, and some light functions. That one, down here, this is for quick coupler. The visibility out of this thing is just freaking killer. Look at this. This is something I did not see on the Kubota. At least mine don't have. It's a badass. <gasps> well, I had to do it. I had to run Johnny's machine before he did. Let's see if it's backwards also. Yep. Oh, what was that? Did something just break? Huh? Something just broke. Really? No. <laughs> She's gone. Hey Johnny, somebody took your excavator.
It's all good. Just like that the day is winding down i want to give a big thanks to global for inviting us down here come hang out i think we walked about 75 miles covering this whole complex a couple vendors i was really hoping to see down here obviously my main brands i would have been cool to see their stuff here but eh, wanted to see the you know the switch and go trucks you know switch the bed on the back of it real quick but they weren't here unfortunate i'm gonna help these guys roll everything up and Get on out of here. We got about an hour's drive to the hotel. Stay one more night. See if we can uh, visit some stuff on the way home. Old Matthew here, Taylor, Jim, Andrew. I can tell his back in there, but that's going to Johnny. That one's going to me. Hopefully everything works out. Oh, you guys got pipes on that coming. Signing off. Officially out of here. Johnny's machine, 290. Everything is sitting right there. Old boys can come pick those things up. Not exactly sure when those machines will make it back up north. We're down here in the valley. Fresno, or Larry, which doesn't look like that's how it's spelled. But anyway, thank you guys. Everybody that came and showed up, hung out, said hello. Appreciate that. Uh, small world out there, I'll tell you that much. I think we got out of here after the mad rush last night, which it was like an hour just getting out of this. I guess it's a fairgrounds. I don't know. But... Oh, they're taking down the, the last balloon. Where'd it go? Cummins balloon. Oh, it's way over there. Bye-bye, buddy. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit that I filmed here. Definitely nice to get away from, you know, everything up there and come down here and get away from it. Now I can't wait to go back up there and get back in the mix. See you guys next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out Global. Later. <laughs> I certainly hope those are just going back to the dealership and the employers are driving them or if not somebody found the keys to the probably the Brandon tractors I'm guessing